Now let's talk about how we make use of the image embeddings to predict member video interaction. We define the problem of member video affinity as the probability of a member M interact with a particular video V. We can build different member video affinity models for different types of actions such as watch time, like, share, comment, etc. To train such a MVA model, the video embedding we have generated will be used together with the member video interaction data points. We can also generate member embedding directly by the member's interaction history, HM, and use simple cosine similarity to compute MVA scores. Using the video embeddings, there are several ways to predict member video affinity. First, we can simply compute the cosine similarity between each video embeddings in the member history and the embeddings of the test video. And we can take the average cosine similarity or the maximum cosine similarity as our final MVA score. This is a very simple method without training. The second method is a more sophisticated method. We introduce the GLMix model or its extension version, the GDMix model. In a GLMix model, which is called a generalized linear mixture model, we characterize the logics of MVA as the summation of a fixed effect term and the random effect term. Here we can see beta 0 and beta M0 stand for the fixed effect that is the global preference on watching video and the member M's preference on watching video. And we have a second term called the random effect term indicating member M's preference over the test video V. Here we use linear combination to combine this effect. We can also generalize it into the deep layer implementation, which is called GDMix model. That is, we can use deep layer to com compute each re-effect. Another method in the literature is called NAIS, that is the Neural Attentive Item Similarity. In this method, we estimate MVA by a weighted summation of cosine similarity between the video embeddings in the member history and the video embeddings of the test video. Here, there is a particular term called atten attention weight, which is computed by the attentive layer with the input of two in video embeddings. Here is an example of GDMix model training. Suppose we have collected members' interest in applying different jobs and used their response to different jobs as labels. And we have represented each member and each job with their corresponding features. We can first train the global intercept for different jobs over all members. Then we can fix the global intercept and train the per member model based on each member's interaction with different jobs. That is, we can train Alex model and Bob's model. This is the GDMix equation, which is the deep extension of GRMix. You can see both the fixed effect, the global intercept, and different random effect per member or per member video are computed by different deep functions. For example, the capital G or the lowercase g are here for different random effect. You can see the GDMix training process in this diagram. We train the fixed effect first with all training data. And then based on the training results of the fixed effect, we partition the data with respect to different members and train the random effect for each member separately. The training end when both two steps converged. For NIS method, let's elaborate here further. We have collected the histo historical watch videos for a member. We denote it as V1, V2, and VI, and a target video V here. 
For each pair of v i and v, we compute two terms, a i and s i. Here a i is an attention term. It is computed by a deep layer f correlating v and v i, and then a softmax across all the v i. And then there is a second term called s i is a simple similarity, cosine similarity between v and v i. Then we finally compute the MVA score as the weighted computation, weighted summation of AISI over all the member history. We have talked about the common technology for multimedia modeling. Now let's talk about the feed multimedia modeling in LinkedIn. LinkedIn feed is a customized collection of social media updates automatically generated to each member. Based on the action and impression labels of different updates to a member, we can train the recommendation model based on various features. For example, the connection strength between the members and its update author, or the member article affinity score, etc. Before the utilization of multimedia contents, the feed ranking model only recommend video updates based on their non-video features. Now, we can add the MVA score as a new feature to the feed model to evaluate the efficacy of MVA score in improving member engagement. Such evaluation can now be done offline with our simulation tool. Now, let's see the performance of our MVA score in different offline evaluation matrix. We have experimented on traditional AUC matrix to see the efficacy of our MVA score in predicting the watch, click, and viral actions. We have also experimented on the feed replay matrix to see how the feed ranking model can improve the member engagement after adding our MVA score. Let's give you a nutshell on how a feed recommendation model can be evaluated with our offline simulation tool, offline feed replay. First, we need to collect a lot of experimental feed interaction data from the real online session, which has keeps the member and the updates and the interaction label. Then, after we train a feed recommendation model, these experimental data will be processed and re-ranked by this new trained model. Then we can pick up the data points in which the read rank position keep unchanged compared to their original position. So then we can accumulate the feed replayed awards on all these match data points and then normalize by the total number of data points, match data points. So this matrix can show us how the MVA score can finally improve online engagement in an offline experiment. Here we compute the AUC results in predicting member watch action using our simple cosine similarity MVA score. We built three methods to generate our video embeddings. First, we directly use the average pooling of frame features output by the Inception version 3 as our video embedding. And second, we use the video embedding computed by our NetVLAB plus CDML models. And the third, we use the video embedding computed by DeepSGMM and CDML models. Then our experiments show that with the NetVLAB plus CDML embeddings, the AUC scores improve against our baseline by 16.96% in maximum aggregation and 15.69% in average aggregation, which is significant improvement. And with the deep SGML plus CDML embeddings, we have even bigger improvement. That is 17.84% in for maximum aggregation and 19.246 and for average aggregation. So both two methods outperform the average pooling and baseline, and the DeepSGMM is even better than the NetVLAB. 
Here, we compare the AUC result in predicting member watch action using our GDMix MVA scores. We use three methods to add the video embeddings into GDMix training. The first, we do not use video embedding. This is our baseline. The second, we use the NetVLED plus CDML models on the video frame features to generate our video embeddings. And the third, we use DeepSGMM plus CDML models to generate our video embedding. As you can see, compared to the baseline, the NetVLED plus CDML embedding improved the AUC by 4.98% in the cold start videos. And with the DeepSGMM plus CDML embedding, this improvement is further enlarged to 5.44%, which shows that the benefits of using our video content features in the cold star videos, which has no interaction history yet. Again, in this experiment, the deep SGMM outperformed the net VLAB. Here we show the offline feed replay performance with our GDMix MVA scores for feed updates with videos. The same as previous lines, we train our GDMix model based on three methods. The first baseline without video feature, the second with NetVLED plus CDML embeddings, and the third deep SGMM plus CDML embeddings. In particular, we measure two metrics, the click-through rates and contribution rates. The click-through rates measure the member click action prediction, and the contribution rates measure the member viral action prediction. You can see, compared to the baseline, the NetVLED plus CDML model improved the click-through rate slightly by 0.6% and contribution rate by 6.5%. And we can see even more significant improvement for the DeepSGMM plus CDML embeddings, which improved the click-through rate by 2.8% and the contribution rate by 9.5%. So in all these experiments, we see lift by adding our train-based video embedding as features. And we see DeepSGMM consistently outperform NetVLAN. Next, we will talk about the application of multimedia modeling in LinkedIn ads. In LinkedIn ads, we are encountered with special challenges to applying multimedia modeling. First, considering the speed, ads recommendation requires fast and frequent training of the model, which means we can only use lightweighted features. Second, ads recommendation results are sensitive to feature availability which means we need to boost feature coverage rate to have good results. Finally, ad recommendation needs to take into account complex factors, which means besides the relevance, there are also other forces driving the recommendation results, such as bidding and ads budget, etc. Based on these considerations, these are the modeling choices we made when applying multimedia modeling in ads. We use simple cosine similarity to compute our MVA score and construct the member embedding from the member watch history of all kinds of video. And besides the cosine similarity, we also experimented another simple MVA score computation, that is the Hadamard product between the member embedding and the video embedding. Similar to the LinkedIn feed, in LinkedIn ads, we also trained the ads recommendation models based on the member and ads interaction data. Again, we use the video related features from the member side and the ads video to compute our MVA score. And then we join this score with other ads relevance features such as advertisement ID, member ID, interaction features, etc., to train the, the final ads recommendation model. Offline evaluation is also developed to evaluate the benefits of adding our video relation features in improving the member advertisement engagement. 
For performance in ads, we evaluated both offline AUC for watch prediction and also online advertiser matrix. Until now, we have seen improvements in both offline and online matrix in ads recommendation after adding multimedia features. We have seen increased AUC for predicting video ads watching by adding the member video affinity scores. Also, we have observed statistically significant positive impact with the MVA score compared to without the MVA score. The video view through rate was increased and the expected cost per visit that is the cost for the advertiser to pay for getting one successful visit was reduced. For confidential reasons, we do not release the numbers here. Here comes to the section summary of applying multimedia modeling in the video search, feed and ads modeling in LinkedIn. We can leverage the video transcript generated by the speech recognition for indexing video search. We can leverage the video embeddings and member video affinity score for the feed and ads recommendation. Here, the members can be modeled by their interaction history with videos. And using the matrix learning based embedding representation, we can predict watch, click, viral actions better than the raw content.